Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is the example that we're going to use to demonstrate how you will compute the cost of equity uh, from beginning to end. So first, I want you to take a minute to either copy down or print out this particular slide so you'll have the information in front of you. So just as to recap, to compute the weighted average cost of capital, uh, we need to have all these components. Now in this particular example, there's no preferred stock. So I can take anything that has to do with preferred stock and set that equal to zero. So there's no preferred stock. So what that means is we need to compute the weight of equity times the cost of equity plus we need to compute the weight of debt times also compute the cost of debt and also subtract 1 minus the tax rate to get the after-tax cost of debt. So to find the weighted average cost of capital for this particular example, we need to compute four different variables because the tax rate is already given to us as 40%. Okay, let's start the calculation with the cost of equity. So let's take a look at what information we are given to determine what is the most appropriate a model to use to estimate the cost of equity for this particular company. If you take a look at the information we're given, we saw that we have the systematic risk of the firm, we have the market risk premium, and we also have the risk-free rate. So this tells me that the capital asset pricing model is the most appropriate model to apply in this situation. So according to the capital asset pricing model, the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate of 5% plus the systematic risk of the firm, which is beta 1.15, times the market risk premium. Notice that here we are given the 9% as the market risk premium. We are not given the market return, so we don't have to do any subtractions. And it turns out that, that the cost of equity for this company is 15.35%. Uh, I encourage you to pause the video and to follow along in the calculation to make sure that you are getting the same numbers on your own. Next, let's, let's compute the cost of debt. So to compute the cost of debt, we know we need to find the yield to maturity for this, comp for this, for this firm. So to find the yield to maturity, we need to have the um, first the payment frequency. This is a semi-annual bond. So that tells us that the number of payment left is 30 because it's 15 years to maturity times two that give us 30 years. The coupon rate is 9%, so that means the coupon payment is $90 per year divided by 2, so that's $45 every 6 months. Um, the price of the bond is 110% of face value, which means that the present value of the bond, or the price of the bond, is $1,100. And remember that we need to assume one of the cash flow is an inflow, one, uh, the other cash flows are outflow, so we'll make the present value or the price of the bond an outflow. The face value is the future value of the bond, and that is $1,000. When we compute the interest, for this bond, it turns out that the interest is 3.97% every six months. So 3.927% every six months. But we are, since we need to get the yield to maturity per year, we have to multiply this number by two. So that gives us a yield to maturity of 7.854%. Okay, so, so far we have computed the cost of equity, we have computed the cost of debt. Now, notice that the interest is tax deductible. So in case you were asked, what is the after-tax cost of debt? So after-tax cost of debt will be the cost of debt times one minus the tax rate. So the after-tax cost of debt, so we have the before-tax cost of debt, we computed that to be 7.854% times 1 minus the tax rate, and the tax rate is 40%. So 40% becomes 0.4, and we have an after-tax cost of debt of 4.712%. So you can use... So now we have all the cost components. The next thing we need to do is to compute the capital structure weight. 
So let's take a look at what information we are given. We were told that there are 50 million shares of stock outstanding at $80 per share. That means the total market value of equity is 50 million shares times $80 per share, and that gives us $4 billion. As far as debt is concerned, we have 1 million debt and a market value of 110% of face value or $1,100 per bond. So if you take 1 million bond times $1,100 per bond, that gives you $1.1 billion. So we have equity of $4 billion, bond debt of $1.1 billion. So in total, we have $4 billion plus $1.1 billion or $5.1 billion altogether as the value of the firm. So to compute the capital structure weight, the weight of equity will simply be $4 billion divided by $5.1 billion total. So that gives us about 78%, so 0.743. And then the weight of debt, is 1.1 billion divided by 5.1 billion total. So the weight of debt is about 21% or 0.2157. Again, when you add the two together, they should add up to one. Now that we have all the components, we can compute the weighted average cost of capital for this firm. So we have, first of all, the weight of equity, which is 0.7843 times the cost of equity, which is 15.35%, plus the weight of debt, which is 0.2157, and multiply. So here we can do one of two things. Since we already computed the after-tax cost of debt, we don't have to do the work again. So we can just put that entire term in here. The after-tax co after cost of debt is 4.712%. And that gives us the final cost of weighted average cost of capital, uh, equity, I'm sorry, weighted average cost of capital of 13.06%. This concludes our extended example of how to compute weighted average cost of capital for a firm uh, in every single component. Um, there are additional slides after um, that provides the step-by-step -step calculation instead of all over one page. Uh, so again, pause the video, go to the following slides to make sure that you understand how to compute every single step. In, um, we'll conclude this video here. In the next video, we're going to address um, additional concerns that you want to pay attention to when computing weighted average cost of capital to perform capital budgeting analysis.